I have talked about going on this trip since I was 16. I kept trying to plan it, but finances, pandemics, life, things just kept seeming to get in the way. And I could have kept waiting for the perfect time or to save a little bit more money, but the longer I waited, the further away the adventure seemed to get. So I just went for it. Madrid is filled with a spirit that I didn't find anywhere else. Filled with busy plazas and palaces and art museums like the Prado and Reina Sofia, I loved starting in Madrid. My first experience with the hostel was successful and I just thought that Madrid was a city that I could breathe in. <laughs> Compared to Madrid, Barcelona was the boisterous cousin who you just can't help but love. I admired all of the artwork by Antony Gaudi and his tremendous impact on the architecture of the city. I could have spent hours admiring the famous Sagrada Familia especially the way that the light came through the stained glass windows inside. I went in a lot of churches, but nothing quite as breathtaking as this one. I took a quick stop in Paris and met up with some longtime friends. We spent the day solely in Montmartre and I can see why so many artists love it here. We went inside Sacre Coeur and took a breather in a park where people were playing bocce ball. And of course we stopped for some wine and macarons. It just felt peaceful. Amsterdam's party reputation really diminished the amount of history and culture that the city has. From the moment we stepped out of the station, I was in love with the look of the city. Although I have never been more nervous to be run over by a bike, the artistry and age of the buildings wowed me the whole time. We made it to the Van Gogh Museum, which was so interesting, and we did a canal cruise, which was a really neat way to see more parts of the city. Toes in the sand, I shine in the moonlight. Mm. It might be the first time We're all alone and it feels right My first attempt officially solo traveling could not have taken place in a more perfect place. Due to some political issues, Bruges was cut off economically in the 13th century, leaving the town perfectly preserved in that medieval state. This was such a walkable city and had fewer tourists than some of the other large cities, which I loved. Plus, I went to a chocolate museum and it had all you could eat chocolate, so what more could you ask for? I won't lie, Berlin intimidated me at first. Perhaps it was the location of my hostel, which I wasn't a fan of, or the dark clothing everywhere, but it soon grew on me. Reminders of a darker time in history can be noticed in all parts of the city, from the multiple Berlin Wall memorials to damage from battles during World War II. The mix of old and new, representative of a nation that had to redefine itself and its culture, was quite moving.
After a long night train, a non-sleeper train, I might add, I was exhausted by the time I arrived in Munich, but I love the city nonetheless. It was like being in a whole other country compared to Berlin. I love the lively feel of Bavaria and the amazing views and architecture that it had to offer. Let me warm your skin. Make the night our own. Although we only spent an evening in Zurich, it was quite possibly the most beautiful evening I spent anywhere on the trip. We got food from a local supermarket and sat on a bridge to eat and watch the sunset. I couldn't help but feel safe, and I was energized to see as much as possible, even if we were only there for a short time. The train to Milan was absolutely gorgeous, and the arrival there did not disappoint. The moment I saw the Duomo for the first time took my breath away almost as much as Sagrada Familia. Exploring the top of it was incredible. After that we shopped to our heart's content and just savoured the fact that we were in Italy. So softly light, soft serve eyes on a Sunday afternoon. Where did I, where did I lose someone like you, gone too soon. And now I'm awake in the middle of the night Wishing I had a little more time Thinking I was most excited to go to Slovenia on this trip and it was incredible. Ljubljana was an absolute gem filled with so much life and culture. There was actually a cultural festival going on while I was there which was special to see because the acts range from professional singers to elementary school choruses. I did a day trip to Lake Bled, the most gorgeous lake I have ever seen. I walked all the way around it went to the island at the center and explored the town. And I could have done that for days because the beauty of the lake was just captivating. Vienna felt a bit like coming home. I felt the trip wrapping up, and I was somewhere familiar. I met up with my friend who I met doing exchange with during high school, and reuniting with her was a highlight for this trip. Plus, the beauty of Vienna never fails to wow me. Now landing in England really did feel like coming home. I mostly saw family here, which was lovely and long awaited. But I still managed to see some new places here as well, with a trip to the Tate Modern ending my adventure on a high note. You know that I this was definitely the adventure of a lifetime for me, and I am so thankful to be able to go on this trip, experience what I did, spend time with people I love, and meet new people. Unfortunately, my wanderlust has only grown. And I can't wait for the next one. <laughs>